Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to this very important announcement. And I appreciate all of you for, for coming and attending. Now, I've spent my first few months in office uh, questioning Chairman Walder, MTA board members, state legislators, transportation experts, economists, and others to identify ways for the MTA to do more to tighten its belt. There is absolutely no doubt that the MTA, without increasing fares or cutting services, can afford to balance its books after this legislation is passed. If there is a need to revisit revenues to fund the MTA, we will address it at that time. The payroll tax can be repealed without cuts to services or increases of fares. Uh, the MTA may choose to threaten to do so going forward, but it's important that that fact be stated now. We should all note that the real estate transfer collections are starting to increase for the MTA due to a recovering economy. I have identified over a dozen potential ways for the MTA to cut expenses to balance its books. These include, but are not limited to, eliminate overtime abuse, well over $400 million is spent on overtime annually. The MTA should share in enforcement camera fines and MTA bus lanes, competitive bidding privatization of New York City bus system, more public-private partnerships, Reduce outside litigation costs by increasing utilization of in-house attorneys as well as the New York State Attorney General's office. Sell some of the MTA's capital assets currently valued at well over $50 billion. Reduce the cash and investment float, which amounts to billions. Reduce the amount of managers and supervisors, which currently is over 10,000 of the 66,000 employees. We should crack down on pension padding where possible. There should be cashless tolls throughout the system. There should be reduced vacancy absentee coverage of MTA bridges and tunnels. And we need to improve the process for approving personal and miscellaneous service contracts. These are just a dozen of many ways that the MTA can do more with less. Additionally, the State Senate on March 15th, in their one house budget resolution, called for a top-down forensic audit to be started within 60 days of the budget's adoption. Fortunately, it didn't make its way into the final agreement, but we continue to advocate for its cause. Now I'd like to summarize the details of the legislation. Small businesses with 25 employees at or less, as well as public and non-public schools throughout the entire Metropolitan Commuter Transportation District would be completely exempted from the payroll tax as of January 1st, 2012. The payroll tax for the seven suburban counties within the MCTD, beginning on January 1, 2012, will have tax rates reduced to 0.23%. The tax will be further reduced to 0.12% for 2013 and fully repealed at the end of 2013. These counties include Suffolk, Nassau, Westchester, Rockland, Orange, Putnam, and Dutchess. Within New York City's five boroughs, the tax would be reduced to 0.28% on January 1, 2013 and 0.21% beginning on January 1, 2014. The payroll tax would remain in effect at 0.21% for New York City's five boroughs. Now I'd like to discuss the cost impacts by year. In year one, the 2012 tax rate, just on the reduction alone, not even talking about small businesses and schools, just the across the board reduction of 0.23%. That's a reduction in a savings for employers in Nassau County of $35.4 million. A savings for employers in Suffolk County, $35.5 billion. The total tax savings is $234 million for 2012. This increases to $479.1 million in 2013, $767.4 million in 2014. And as we go through each year, the employer tax savings will increase. In Nassau, in 2013, the number is $72.9 million, staying in the hands of employers. $73.1 million, staying in the hands of employers in Suffolk. In 2014, for Nassau, the savings is $110.4 million, and in Suffolk, $110.7 million. MTA ridership results for 2010, for 2010 include $2.3 billion subway and bus rides for New York City Transit in comparison to only 161 million rides for the Long Island Railroad and the Metro North Railroad. It should be pointed out that these amounts do not include ridership 
numbers for the MTA bus company, which received separate subsidy assistance from New York City in accordance with its operating agreement with the MTA. Based on a combined ridership total of 2.64 billion rides for New York City Transit, the Long Island Railroad, and Metro North, this translates into 93.5% of the ridership being in New York City and 6.5% of it being for MTA's two commuter railroads. The MTA tax was a taxpayer-funded bailout that was passed uh, to support a failing New York City-based entity. We at our state right now, where our state government, our federal government, businesses, families, everyone's finding a way to do more with less. It's time for the MTA to follow suit and do the same. We need your support. The MTA payroll tax will not be repealed without your full assistance. The need to repeal the MTA payroll tax can easily be communicated in a soundbite. But as I've said before, the actual repeal of this tax will only come from a broader coalition of louder advocates, all with bold ideas to fix our mass transit system. If I had been in office in 2009, I would have voted no. There would not have been 32 votes to create the MTA payroll tax in the first place. Now that I'm in office, it is my duty, it is our duty, to introduce this important legislation. So at this time, I'd like to turn the podium over to uh, State Senator Jack Martins, who is the, uh, the co-prime sponsor of this legislation and uh, has been a big supporter of this cause. Senator Martins. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and it is great to see you out here today supporting this great initiative. I want to congratulate Senator Zeldin for his uh, commitment to seeing that this tax is uh, repealed once and for all. Just to contextualize a little about what we, we just heard, what Senator Zeldin just said, and I want to make sure everybody hears this loud and clear, is that at the end of two years, Nassau and Suffolk County will be able to hold on to $220 million that they're now paying in an MTA payroll tax. That's $220 million that will remain in our pockets for our small businesses, for our governments, for our not-for-profits, and we need to contextualize that as well. It isn't just businesses that are paying this. Our governments are paying it. Our counties, our towns, our villages, our not-for-profits are paying it. At a time when we're in the worst recession we've had in 80 years, when we need the services of our not-for-profits now more than ever, these institutions, and you'll hear from some of their representatives here today, like Long Island Cares, like United Cerebral Palsy in Nassau, are paying tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars each and every year that's money directly out of the mouths of people who rely on these services each and every year. Let's talk about our counties that are paying millions of dollars between Nassau County and Suffolk County, and that's taxpayers who are paying that. The time has come for us to repeal this tax. I like the approach, I approve the approach, and I'm proud to be a sponsor of this measure. We take it out over three years. Now. When we talk about the first year savings, it's about $234 million. The MTA's budget is over $14 billion. It's less than 2%. So when people start talking about fare increases and service cuts, it's not fair. Everyone else in the state, through our budget, every agency in New York State has been asked to cut. All of our schools, all of our local governments have been asked to cut. If the MTA cannot find 2% within their own budget the first year, in order to accommodate the savings that we're going to provide to small businesses throughout the lower New York City region, New York State region, excuse me, then they're not doing it. They're not getting it done. And we should expect more from our authority. As was mentioned, 2.3 billion riders take the subway each and every year. 2.3 billion as compared to 161 million that take Long Island Railroad and Metro North. So it is fair that as we phase this out, we phase it out for all seven counties in the downstate region, while at the same time, we ask those who use mass transit, those in New York City who are using the subways and the buses, that they continue to contribute. But we've also taken into account small businesses as the backbone of our country and as the backbone of our economy. Small businesses with less than 25 employees will have the opportunity to say goodbye to this tax and once and for all be able to commit themselves towards rebuilding this economy, hiring more people, putting people back to work, and that's what's important. 
We have to move forward. We have to allow our economy an opportunity to move forward. And I don't believe it was lost on anyone that Long Island lags behind the rest of the state and upstate New York as far as coming out of this recession. This MTA payroll tax is a significant portion of that. And the sooner we shed ourselves of this tax, the sooner we can commit ourselves to moving forward, creating those jobs, and getting this economy back on the right track. Senator Zeldin has taken the initiative to move this process forward. I'm committed to join with him as I believe we will in the Senate. We have a sponsor in the Assembly, Assemblyman Latimer, who, who has agreed to sponsor it as well in that, in that House. So we expect that uh, shortly we will be able to make strides, get some traction, and move this forward. And again, I want to thank Senator Zeldin for his initiative. Thank you. Senator Martins just brought up a very important point. This is not a one-house bill. We do have a, an Assembly Democrat sponsor in Georgia Latimer, and uh, we have a couple of assemblymen here who will speak briefly. But first, I'd like to bring up uh, someone. There's no way that I'd even be a state senator standing here before you right now, if not for him. Uh, it's uh, Sen Senator Ken Laval, who's also uh, a huge supporter of our efforts to repeal this tax. Senator Laval. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank all of you for coming out on a Sunday morning. I thank my colleagues, Lee Zeldin, Jack Martins, for spearheading this, uh, this effort. Very briefly, each of you who are here are being deputized to go out and build a grassroots support for this effort. This is the only way a bill gets passed, because our government is we the people, and you are the people that will go out and make sure that every person understands how this affects us. Small businesses have been affected big time by this, and it was mentioned why we lag behind other areas of the state in moving our economy forward. There is, beside the small businesses and the people who are affected, whose jobs have been eliminated and we can't grow new jobs, I represent the East End. And the East End, as you move from where I live in Port Jefferson, to Montauk and Orient Point, and faraway places like Fisher's Island. Just received a call from Fisher's Island, and they said, what is this tax? It's affecting us. Could you imagine part of New York State, part of the town of South Hole, that has, is so far removed from using any MTA services, any, is affected by this. And I can tell you, when you are an island as far off as Fisher's Island, businesses there need every bit of help to support jobs on that, on that island. So um, my colleagues have really outlined it, but you are the most important players in this because you are going to mobilize and ensure that Republicans and Democrats in every part of this state understand what this means to the Long Island economy and other areas in the MTA region. Lee Zeldin, Jack Martins, God bless you. Thank you. Our effort, like I said, is not a one-house bill. We need the support of the State Assembly. And between now and June 20th to get this done, we're trying to catch lightning in a bottle. But I'll tell you what, we're going to make the effort. Maybe in politics, the smart thing to do is to, uh, to not take some chances along the way. But I'll tell you what, I, I like taking chances. And we have a couple of assemblymen here who are going to help spearhead the fight to see that the Assembly brings this uh, bill to, to, a, to the floor for a vote. And uh, first I'd like to bring up, um, what, we have two assembly co-sponsors here. I'd like to introduce Assemblyman D. Murray. I'm 
I'll make it brief. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone for turning out. This is an extremely important issue. But first, let, let me just say that many times you have people going out, and many times you see grandstanding up in Albany and among politicians. And uh, I can say that these two gentlemen both campaigned on this issue. They made promises to work hard to try to repeal this this job-killing tax, an unnecessary tax, and they're living up to it. Not only that, they're doing it in an intelligent way. You know, when you get up to Albany and you say, yeah, we want to get rid of the MTA tax, I've been saying it all along. All along, my, my statement has been, it's not a, a, a revenue problem, it's a spending problem, it's a management problem. We need to get our hands around the things that are going wrong and that have been done wrong in the MTA, the waste, the fraud, the abuse. One of the ways we can do that is for a top-down forensic audit of the MTA. I met recently with the state comptroller for a, a good lengthy one-on-one -on -one conversation and we both agree we need to delve deeper into the MTA to find some of this waste, fraud, and abuse. But again, it's a process and that's what people have to understand. When you're, when you're up there, you can't just wave a magic wand and get rid of a terrible tax like this. It takes work, it takes dedication, and it takes intelligence. It takes an effort to come up with a smart plan, and that's why I'm absolutely thrilled and proud to be a co-sponsor of this bill. And I just say hats off to Senator Zeldin, Senator Martins. You're doing a fantastic job. This is the right approach. This is the way we are going to get rid of this onerous job-killing tax. So I say thank you very much, and I'm proud to stand beside you. Selman Murray is a small business owner and another Selman who knows the plight of small business owners here in Suffolk, uh, newly elected as, uh, as I was November 2010. This is Selman Al Graf. Thank you. We've been fighting this every day up in Albany. Uh, every day we sit there and we talk to people about how this tax is affecting us. Every day I meet with other people telling me how the tax affects them. You're paying this through the libraries. The library has to pay this to non-for-profits. The list goes on and on. I asked for a comprehensive list of what we pay this tax on. I can't even get one. They're not even, they don't even know how many things we pay this tax on. They handed me a list of about 10. And there were about eight that I knew that weren't on the list. Right? So what it comes down to, I, I applaud Lee and I applaud Senator Martin and putting this legislation forward. And I'm more than happy to sign on to it. And uh, like I said, this is a fight that we have every day. I mean, to the governor's office, to the state senate, to the state assembly. We talk to our assemblymen upstate that aren't affected by this tax. And they feel that it's wrong. So we're going to do everything we can to try to get rid of this tax. But one thing I have to say, we need your help. We've been doing this all along. Now we need the troops to come in and support us in our efforts. So I want to thank everybody for coming here today and start making phone calls, start putting it out on Facebook, start doing whatever communication you can to get people out here and to support this legislation. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to bring up uh, two uh, local elected officials who I'm very grateful are, are here to show their support for this effort to repeal the MTA tax. Um, for, first is uh, Suffolk County Treasurer Angie Carpenter, who, as full disclosure, is also a candidate for Suffolk County Executive. Um, and I'm also bringing up uh, Councilman Jim Malone, who, um, who also has had some experience working in the Suffolk County Clerk's Office to, uh, to talk briefly about the impact on local government. So Angie, uh, Council Malone, if you mind coming up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Zeldin, Senator Martins. A, a real heartfelt thank you for your effort. And as been said before, they are doing this, they are approaching this in a very, very responsible fashion. Because once a revenue source is in place, it's very difficult to remove it. But they're coming up with a very, very practical approach. And just listening to the list of initiatives that Senator Zeldin offered to the MTA, I can't believe that it wasn't done to begin with, why we ever had to see it. But I'll tell you why we had to see that tax, is because what's happening here today, this awareness, this deputization, as Senator Laval said, of all of you standing here, should have happened when this tax was first proposed. But it was under the radar. People just didn't know what was going on. Because I got wind of it, and I started talking about it, and when you spoke to business owners and said, 
you know, do you know about this MTA tax that's being proposed? And when they passed it, it was done retroactively. That when accountants had to prepare the books for businesses, all of a sudden were coming up with a tax that they had to pay for previous months that they didn't even know was going to happen. It, it affects each and every business, sole proprietor, pizza parlor, car dealerships. I had a car dealership tell me that this tax alone is costing their multi-dealer organization one million dollars and not one of their employees uses the MTA. It's absolutely egregious. It is something that never should have happened. And county taxpayers, county is paying nearly four million dollars. So who's paying that? The taxpayers. Each and every person that is being taxed, it is being passed along to consumers and the taxpayers. So I applaud everyone that's involved in this effort and all of you for coming out to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you also, everyone, for being here today. And thank you, Senator Zeldin and uh, Senators, Senator Martins. I think Senator LaBelle put it very well about this tax and its use. I come from Southampton Town, which is quite a few miles from where we stand, and certainly is quite a few miles from Manhattan. And I can tell you we have no subways in Hampton Bays. <laughs> but we pay for them. In my town, uh, with 500 employees, we've just been hit with another tax, this MTA tax. It's $144,000 a year. We have 50,000 tax bills that go out a year. Mathematically, that sounds about $3 a piece for every tax bill. And my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will say, well, Jim, don't be so frustrated. Don't be, don't be so mad. It's merely a cup of coffee. I want my coffee back. <laughs> you know, it's not the point. $144,000 a year from the town of Southampton means two or three people that we necessarily need. It's police officers, it's the services that we try to provide on a daily basis that we can't afford because we have no choice but to pay this tax. This is a solid plan. It's a phased in plan. We didn't get to have it phased in upon us and I applaud, I applaud you senators uh, for phasing it out. It should be dropped. It's not a question, as Dean Murray said, of revenues. It's a question of spending. As the Senator Zeldin said, I also serve in the county clerk's office, and I will tell you, in managing the finances there, we take in about $100 million a year in real estate transfer tax and mortgage taxes. $50 million of that goes to the several towns, the 10 towns throughout our county. And $50 million on a quarter of a million, quarter of a billion dollars worth of income. 20% of it goes to the MTA. A million dollars a week comes out of Suffolk County, comes out of transfers of real estate all over this county. When is enough enough? $144,000 in my town. Six million dollars a year comes out of my town and supports the MTA. $500,000 a month. I don't have subways in Hampton Bays. I don't want them, and I will not pay for them. Thank you, Senator. You know, with regards to the decision to, uh, to do the phase out, one of the discussions were, well, maybe we should just exempt small businesses tomorrow. I said, that'd be a great idea. But you know what? We, we are going to, uh, to war with the MTA PR machine right now, because they are going to try to distort the facts and try to claim that they can't afford to live more within their means, that they can't afford to live off the bailout spigot of the MTA payroll tax. They have until January 1st, 2012, and throughout 2012 to figure out how to save $234 million. It can be done, it can be done easily, they can do it right now, today. We'll give them a six month head start. But uh, next I'd like to uh, call up, we have, we have a few local organizations that are here represented today. And uh, first, I'm very proud to introduce uh, someone who has helped lead the fight uh, locally and uh, around the 12-county MTA region. Uh, his uh, organization is called Conservative Society for Action. I appreciate his help trying to get this MTA tax repealed. I'd like to introduce Stephen Flanagan. I'm glad to hear that grassroots is so important. That's a good thing. We started an organization a couple of years ago. We've got about 5,000 members now. And our top priority back then was to change the New York State Senate. And we can do that right here on Long Island. 
And we did it when we elected Lee Zeldin and Jack Martins. It was a great day for New York, and it was a great day for Long Island. Now you can see the results. The grassroots got these people elected, and I'll tell you right now, we're going to go to work statewide to make sure that we get the support we need to do this. This isn't the end of the battle, this is the beginning of the battle. And we're going to do a call out from our organization and to organizations around the state to make sure they know how important this is, how important it is to this state, how important it is to this economy. And i also like to thank you for putting in that little small business thing. I've been a small business owner myself for a long time, about 30 years or so. It's good to see that at least a couple of members of the state Senate, and hopefully the rest of the Senate, maybe some assembly members, will understand how important it is for small business to survive and stay here on Long Island. I want to applaud Jack Martins. I want to applaud Zid Lee Zeldin for leading this fight. It was our number one cause in the last two years. Repeal the MTA tax. These people that you see out here standing here held those signs. We got rid of uh, a couple of bad guys, the ones who were responsible for it. The deciding vote to pass the MTA tax in the first place took place with the previous uh, senator. So we're going to be just as dedicated, we're going to work just as hard as we did to get these people elected to repeal the MTA tax. Thank you. Now for a, uh, for a different uh, perspective, I'd like to call Paul Pachter, who is the Executive Director of Long Island Cares, a non-for-profit group who, uh, w which has been significantly impacted by the MTA payroll tax. Uh, Paul, we're, uh, we're very happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Zeldin, Senator Martins. Uh, this is not a partisan issue, uh, not for the not-for-profit community on Long Island. There are thousands of charitable organizations here throughout the state of New York that have lost money as a result of reductions in state funding, agencies in Nassau County that have lost funding. Uh, and now to add on the regressive MTA payroll tax is really doing significant damage to charitable organizations on Long Island. It's taking away food from the hungry. It's moving away vital services to senior citizens. It's taking important mental health services away from returning veterans who are suffering from PTSD. It's taking away programs from the developmentally disabled. It's taking away vital support to the homeless. The important thing now is that we look at a time when unemployment is at a record high and people are turning to charitable organizations for assistance in record numbers the agencies don't need the ability right now to say no we can't help you because we don't have the staff we don't have the funding repealing the tax is intelligently as senator zeldin and senator martins does over the period of three years will enable money to be put back into the not-for-profit infrastructure here in Long Island across the state this is an issue where people in new york state are crying for help and in order to get the help they need, taking hundreds of millions of dollars that they've lost and putting it back into the system will go a long way to making sure that New Yorkers and in the Pacific Long Islanders are taken care of. So thank you so much for inviting us here today. Our next speaker is Jack Kalka. Jack is active with the Hop Hog Industrial Association as well as an organization called Tax Relief Now. Their executive director, Karen Pope, is here as well. Uh, helping also to lead the fight to repeal the MTA payroll tax. I'd like to bring up Jack. Thank you. This press conference today is being held within walking distance of the Hopog Industrial Park, the largest industrial park east of the Mississippi, which acts as the economic engine for Suffolk County. As a founder of the HIA, the Hopog Industrial Association, HIA Long Island. We are diametric, totally opposed to this tax. It is an albatross, a deleterious albatross on industry in Suffolk County. We believe and we applaud Senator Martins, Senator Zeldin on th suggesting this proposal. We believe though that it is only a first step in resolving the issue of solving the problems of an inefficient, corrupt, quasi-public agency that basically answers to no one. We believe the real final step will be privatization, public partnership of building, 
financing and operating infrastructure. The rest of the world is doing it. The rest of the country is doing it. And instead of sucking money out of the economy, we should be developing funds for the economy. This is the reason why we support Senator Zeldin and Senator Martins. It will take a substantial period of time to effectuate a restructuring of the MTA to solve those problems. In the interim, we believe that over the next three years, this tax must be phased out because it is destroying the economy of Suffolk County. Thank you. Our next two speakers, uh, I'd like to bring up Richard Bavone and Robert Fonte. Richard is the Nassau County Chairman of the Long Island Business Council. Robert is the Suffolk County Chairman of the Long Island Business Council. And uh, I thank both you gentlemen for coming as well. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first off, we'd like to thank our senators for keeping their word on their campaign promise because it's about the people. This is very important and it's about Long Island. And we challenge the rest of our senators and assemblymen on both sides of the aisle to sit down at the table because we support this logical way of repealing this tax because this tax is really a business killer. Not only do we pay it in our businesses, we pay it in our homeowners tax, we pay it for our fire districts, our water districts, our county, our town, and our school districts. We keep on paying and we get nothing for it. Small business owners on Long Island are in survival mode right now and repealing this tax is very important, and we thank you and we support it. Well, thank you, Senator. You know, it, it, someone was questioning before what, how many taxes we have. The well, last I counted, it was 22 MTA taxes. Keep on looking, I'm sure we'll find more. Hey, our local businesses really made this country, and they made this, they made this state, and made this uh, uh, county, and it makes our towns and villages. But unfortunately, we are ta it is being taxed at nauseum. Uh, most businesses, actually all businesses, run on not what you make, but what you spend, because we have to curtail that. I think the MTA has a responsibility to do the same thing. You know, the MTA has had it backwards for a while uh, in terms of their, their management of, of the MTA as, it, as, an, as a separate agency that should be self-sustaining, and it is not because it keeps on coming back to the businesses, the people of this state, people of this county, people of this town, to keep on supporting it. Well, the MTA does have it backwards. And they have it backwards, not only that the Long Island Railroad takes us into the city, it's taking us an extra stop. It's called out of state. They are taking us out of the state and delivering us somewhere else because we can't afford to be here anymore. The last thing, the last thing I just want to say is that the MTA has it backwards again because they actually still believe that we are an ATM. If you look at it from, from the right side, right side up or the right side backwards. So uh, please repeal this tax. The Long Island Business Council applauds you and we thank you so much for your support this morning. Our uh, final speakers today um, are presidents of local chambers of commerce. At this time, I'd like to bring up Jay Satinstein, the president of the Brentwood Chamber of Commerce, Laura Ragacki, the president of the uh, Bayport Blue Point Chamber of Commerce, and Steve Foray, the president of the East Islip Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Jay, if you want to start. Good afternoon. Uh, when I was asked, when I was contacted by Senator Zeldin's office to attend a press conference on a Sunday morning. My first thought was, no, I don't want to give up my Sunday morning long runs. Then I came to my senses. I realized how much this little tax affects the small business person. Small businesses employ over 52% of the workforce. We're the ones who spend nights after we're closing thinking of how we can make ends meet. Added to our cost is this third of a percent MTA tax. It pushes the envelope. It may not sound like a lot, but this amounts to one and a half billion dollars, no small amount of money. But why should we in the outlying con con counties, excuse me, why in the outlying counties be forced to pay for the services we don't and we can't use? If the MTA needs money to pay its bills, let the MTA do what small businesses do, cut their costs. The private business sector does this by saving a little bit on almost everything, and if we must, we raise our prices. We all have to live within our budgets. Let the MTA adjust its benefits and work schedules. And if it still needs money, ask riders to pay more. I believe the best way to live within your budget is to look at your own expenses and cut where you can. As U.S. Senator 
Everett Dirksen said, and I paraphrase, a million here, a million there. Pretty soon you're talking about real money. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Laura Rogacki, and I'm the owner of Little Angel Center with offices in Blue Point in Medford, New York. We provide speech and other therapies to children and adults and employ both therapeutic professionals and clerical staff. I am also the president of the Bayport Blue Point Chamber of Commerce. I'm here today to urge lawmakers throughout Long Island and the greater metropolitan district to rescind the MTA tax and put a stop to yet another tax burden on local business owners just trying to live the American dream. The MTA tax has affected the many businesses that represent the very fiber of Long Island. The businesses that dot our main streets and downtowns and have been the cornerstone of the tax base that pays for our schools and many other local programs. Every day I hear from business owners that they can no longer bear the weight of these mounting tax burdens that often force them to take money from their own skyrocketing benefits to send funds to the mismanaged MTA. As a small business owner, I struggle every day to manage my funds and maintain a budget that is reasonable for what my earnings will allow. I am forced to make difficult decisions, such as the ability to hire and release employees, track benefit spending, and make adjustments where necessary to stay within my means and be a responsible business owner. And when it becomes difficult to achieve these goals, I am left to try harder, not ask for a bailout. I think it's time for the MTA to try harder to be responsible in running their operations. I'm tired of paying the MTA, and each time I must write my quarterly check to them, I sit and wonder what I could have used that money for in my own business. New equipment for my patients, new computer, etc. I am confident that I speak on behalf of many other business owners who have had enough. It is time to ask Albany to do what's right and repeal the MTA tax and provide some relief to our very overburdened small business owners. I support the efforts of Senators Eldon and Martins and applaud their efforts in the presentation of this bill. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to uh, join Senator Zeldin and Senator Martins here today uh, for such a great cause and aid in the fight to appeal uh, the MTA tax. As you know, this tax is created to help the MTA reduce their misspending and try to reduce their growing $100 million budget gap. This is an unfair tax placed on all New Yorkers, especially Long Islanders, who do not utilize the services provided by the MTA. We as Suffolk County residents need to do everything possible to keep Long Islanders from fleeing, as we see happening on a daily basis. Um, as, a, as a business owner, resident, and Chamber of Commerce president, I support the Senator's efforts. We, can do all, we need to do all that we have to to keep our residents here, keep jobs in our local communities, attract more businesses to come to Long Island, so let's make Long Island shine and be a place where people and businesses desire to move and remain. Thank you all for your efforts and thank you for being here today. So recognize a few people that are here. Uh, Ed Walsh is the chairman of the Suffolk County Conservative Party. Um, I, I had an opportunity to talk to Chairman Walsh, uh, Chairman Mike Long, the chairman of the state. A conservative party and a conservative party is absolutely a thousand percent behind uh, the efforts to repeal the MTA payroll tax and to hold the MTA accountable. And thank you for being here, Chairman Walls. I see uh, John Verdone, the uh, school board president of Sayville. It uh, has a huge impact on school districts. It's great to have you here representing as well. Senator Skelos uh, and his staff have uh, been amazing throughout this entire process. Uh, I'm thinking of you know names like Robert Mohica and Mary Clark and some of those others in the finance team that helped develop this phase out plan uh, to work on crunching numbers and uh, we, there's no way that we would get to this point if not for uh, the support of Senator Skelos and his staff so um, I want to say on behalf of the residents of the 3rd Senate District uh, thank you to Senator Skelos for, uh, for all of your help. Um, I, want to, uh, I want to just say thank you to all of you for being here and, uh, and finally I'll close with this. We have a really popular governor right now. Last time I checked, Andrew Cuomo's approval rating is somewhere around 100%, maybe uh, maybe 70 or so to be accurate. And he has a soapbox that's uh, awfully a lot bigger than uh, than ours here today. And he's outlined an agenda, um, and I am I just have to make a pitch for him to add a fourth item to that list. Um, we're making progress in 
throughout this entire legislative session. We passed the budget on time. We cut spending for the first time in 15 years. We closed a $10 billion deficit. We're getting a lot of stuff done. Governor Cuomo has the ability, when I say that we're trying to catch lightning in a bottle, in some respects, you might be one Andrew Cuomo away from getting that done. We are going to do everything in our power, those that are here today, those of you who came out on a Sunday. But we need Albany to support our efforts, and that includes our governor. So I, I have sent him a letter uh, encouraging him to add this to his agenda, um, and hopefully he, uh, he, he heeds the call because those who live in the 12-county MTA region um, can use his leadership, and I would be happy Happy to share the stage uh, with, with him because this isn't really about uh, any of us. This is about getting this tax repealed. And uh, we strongly encourage Governor Cuomo uh, to get involved with, uh, with this repeal. Thank you all for attending.